What's up dudes and dudettes, all you awesome people, Harry Heaven here, and welcome to another book review. This book review, Throne of Jade by Naomi Novik. Now this is the second book in the Tamer series, or Tamari, Tamer, I never pronounce it right, I just, I just call it Tamer. So this is the second book in the Tamer series. If you haven't read the first book, uh, I'll leave a little pop-up here. Ding. You can follow that through and you can see my review on the first one. Uh, let's have a quick recap. And you, anyway, or for those of you not interested in the first review, just want to read this for you. Quick recap. Tamer is a historical, is it historical? Yeah. It is a alternative history fantasy series. Now, it's set in the Napoleonic Ages, so the Napoleonic era, but with Dragons. Dragons. One more time, guys. Dragons. Now, I've mentioned previously in some of my previous videos, betting anything with dragons is better. <laughs> so, this is essentially a novel based around the Napoleonic era, but they've added dragons into it. And they've made it look very interesting because they're intelligent dragons. So they, they're all very unique individual characters and they are perfectly capable of speaking. Uh, from the moment they're hatched, they speak. And they, the best person, way I've heard describing it was someone described it as they imprint upon human or human imprints upon them. When they're hatched from the egg, they have to be put into harness by someone straight away. But they have to ask them, say, will you go into this harness? And the, if the dragon accepts and lets them put harness on, then they're imprinted. That that one person is that person becomes that dragon's captain for life, and the dragon they become like family basically. It's the easiest way to describe it. So, Phoenix Wars, dragons. The first book introduced us to Tamer and Tamer's captain Lawrence, who used to be a naval officer, and it was a very good book. I really enjoyed it. Very quick it was but very enjoyable. Now the second book, Throne of Jade, carries on from where the first one left off and on the back it says, Captain Will Lawrence, formerly of His Majesty's Navy, has had only a few months to adjust to his new life as the captain of a fighting dragon, but now he can't imagine living life outside the British aerial corps, nor a life without Tamer. Now the Chinese have demanded Tamer's immediate return and the British government cannot afford to refuse them, even if it costs them the most powerful weapon in their arsenal. Lawrence and Tamer must journey to China, knowing that once they arrive in the exotic east, they could be separated forever. <sighs> now, let me read you a short passage from the book to get you excited. Now, however, you are well aware, Yong Xing said, and the insult remains. Lung Tin Yang is still in harness, treated little better than a horse, expected to carry burdens and exposed to all the brutalities of war, and all this with a mere captain as his companion? Better had his eggs sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Appalled, Lawrence was glad to see this callousness left Barham and Powell's as staring and speechless as himself. Even among Yong Xing's own retinue, the translator flinched, shifting uneasily and for once did not translate the prince's words back into Chinese. Sir, I assure you, since we learned of your objections, he has not been under harness at all, not a stitch of it, Barham said recovering. We have been at the greatest pains to see that Temer, that is, to Long Tian Zhang's comfort, and to make redress for any inadequacy in his treatment. He is no longer assigned to Captain Lawrence, and I can assure you that they have not spoken these last two weeks. The reminder was a bitter one, and Lawrence felt what little remained of his temper fraying away. If either of you have any real concern for his comfort, you would consult his feelings, not your own desires, he said, his voice rising, a voice that had been trained to bellow orders through a gale. You complain of having him under harness, and in the same breath ask me to trick him into chains so that you might drag him away against his will? I will not do it. I will never do it, and be damned to you all. Judging by his expression, Barham would have been glad to have Lawrence himself dragged away in chains, eyes almost bulging. 
hands flat on the table and the verge of rising for the first time. Admiral Powell spoke, breaking in and forestalled him. Enough. Lawrence, hold your tongue. Barham, nothing further can be served by keeping him. Out, Lawrence. Out at once. You are dismissed. Does that get you excited? It's a really good book. Throne of Jade. Now, this book was first released in the... From what I've looked on Wikipedia, I'm assuming it's correct. Who knows? It's Wikipedia. It's you really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? It says it was released in April 2006 in the US and then August 2007 in the UK. It seems like a very, very long window to release in the US then release in the UK. Who knows, it might be true at the time. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed reading this book. Uh, it was a really good book. It's so similar to the first book. It's written very well. Characters are amazing. Um, like I said, it's dragons. If you introduce dragons to anything, then my response will be... Shut up and take my money! Shut up and take my money. Yeah. <laughs> um, carries on following Lawrence and... Or Captain Will... William Lawrence? Lawrence? Yeah, Will Lawrence. I was really confused there. Carries on following Captain Will Lawrence and Tamir. Now, Will Lawrence, because it's in the Napoleonic era, I suppose this is why. But he's very stiff-lipped. If that makes, if you understand what that means, he really reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean. The character of Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Norrington. Do you remember Norrington? He will accompany these fine men to the helm and provide us with a bearing to Ila de Muerto. That's how he reminds me. That's how he reminds me. That's who he reminds me of. <laughs> it is Norrington. Much like the Car Pirates of Caribbean films, he does warm towards the end of the series as well. <laughs> um, another well written book it is, and very interesting. Very uh, political it is. Uh, at the end of the last book, we discover that Tamir is a celestial, which is a rare breed of Chinese dragon, and the Chinese want it. Gave his book basically the Chinese want him back because he's a rare breed imperial dragon and they never ever leave China and to be quite honest the British are really confused as to why he was found upon a French ship. This book is a very political story I suppose this book because it's not part of the actual, actual it's not part of the actual Napoleonic war there's no wars no battles I mean there is a few battles, there's even a sea battle with, with a massive sea serpent, but I shouldn't do any spoilers really. I've tried to not give any spoilers till the end. <laughs> um, there is a few skirmishes and a few battles, a few small fights, but there is nothing to do with the French and the English fighting against each other, which the first story was sort of about the sea battles and then the training and then a big battle against the Napoleon's forces coming across the river the river <laughs> coming across the sea um, whereas this one is just all about the politics of China the embassy, embassy between China and Britain coming together and trying to resolve come to some sort of solution to resolve the problem of a celestial being out of China when the celestials are supposed to be royal dragons and are supposed to stay in China it is very well written it makes you read it and before you know it you have the whole day's gone, you've read the book, <laughs> and you look up, wow, where's the day gone? <laughs> because you get so immersed in the story, it's that well written. And it really makes you want to read the next one, which I am excited to start now that I finish this one. Now, this is a very short book. This is 391 pages long. So, very short, very fast-paced. Uh, characters were very believable. I thoroughly enjoyed it and was immense the whole way through. I really enjoy how the story develops and I like the friendship between Lawrence and Tamir and you see how it's stretched, um, especially as they go to China and discover that the dragons in China are treated completely different to the dragons in Britain. Um, the dragons of Britain are almost treated as slaves. They, 
street as objects that are used for the war. You go to China and the dragons themselves work themselves, earn their own money themselves, pay for their own food themselves. They have streets in China are all wide so dragons can walk down the streets whereas in Britain people are afraid of dragons and therefore they shy away from them and the dragons are kept in pens away from the cities and not even allowed to fly over the cities in some cases because people put in complaints about dragons being nearby and it's interesting because you see Lawrence himself Captain Lawrence, Will Lawrence he as stiff-lipped as he is and as much as he wants to defend his country he also comes to realise as well that the Chinese dragons are treated better than the British dragons and he worries that Tamer will want to stay in China even if Tamer is given the choice whether to stay or go he may want to stay there because of how well they are treated there but rating how would I rate this book I'm going to give this book a four out of five very very good book uh, it's very short that's the, the only downside to me is it seems very short half the book well more than half the book was about the journey to China and then the last bit was the rest of the story I did thoroughly enjoy it but it seemed very very short I wanted more from a novel very short novel very enjoyable but guys Let's go into the spoiler section. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> so, spoiler alert. Lawrence and Tamir are forced to go to China. They have to go to China to make up for the, to the with the emperor for Tamir being taken away. Now, Lawrence doesn't want anything to do with this. He just wants to carry on. But he knows the duty and he knows he has to go there because the British government has commanded him to. So he does. Um, interesting parts of the book. I won't, give you, I won't give major spoilers away. I'll just give you a few interesting fact, things I found in there. Um, so, Yong Xing turns out to be the bad guy. Major spoiler alert. Major spoiler alert. Yong Xing turned out to be the bad guy. And his dragon is a celestial and she is an albino and they do not like the fact that Tamir is in Britain and they want Tamir to be away from Britain and uh, I won't give away the plot details because there is a good plot in there about why they want Tamir back in China um, it ends up good though good story at the end turns up well uh, ends up with Lawrence being adopted by the Chinese Emperor <laughs> that's the book. You don't need to read it. I'm just giving you everything. I'm giving you all the spoilers. <laughs> uh, some of my favourite parts in there um, would have to be Feng Li. That's right. We found the worst assassin ever. Yeah. Worse than Mr. Bean as an assassin. <laughs> this guy tried to assassinate Lawrence twice. The first time, Lawrence just thought he was falling over upside down out in a hatch in the ship, and he's like, oh, okay, let me help you. Don't be kind around there. <laughs> the second time, he just tried to attack him out in the open, and got swept off the ship. Worst assassin ever. Uh, another good part of, this, of the book, which I really enjoyed, was the attack upon the pavilion when Tamir was away mating. And there was an attack on the pavilion, and Lawrence and all the men were attacked by a group of Hun Huns, they were called. And they were pre-warned as well about this by your son Kai that these Hun Hun were coming to attack them. And they all looked out and all the guards were gone. Tamer was away, which was he normally would do throughout the day. And they're like, oh guys, what are we gonna do? Let's hold up in one of the small pavilions, there's water inside, we've got guns, we'll be fine. The Hun Huns don't have guns, we'll be okay. And Sun Kai did pre-warn them that there's rumours that some of the Hun Hun have been trained in a martial art called, called Shaolin Quan. Shaolin Quan, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's what it's right in a book. Uh, I haven't heard it before, I haven't looked it up actually. Um, basically, these guys are ninjas. There's only one of them that attacks the pavilion. He jumps over the heads, Matrix style, spins around, jumps over the face, ding, boom, booms. It's some proper crouching target, hidden dragon moment going on. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed that part of the story I did. The storyline itself, I really enjoyed the whole way through. It was very good. It seems to suddenly come to an abrupt end. It's like, I think because I'm so 
in captured in the story that you're reading it and then the next thing you realize you're towards the end of the book and it's going to end and you think oh no how can it end all of a sudden oh, this is it can't end and it does it ends but it ends really well and Naomi Novik brings it together very well um, which is why I rate this very highly and although I wish it was a longer novel as opposed to a short novel and it's very fast paced I wish the pace would slow down a little bit and make the novel a bit longer but then again I have thoroughly enjoyed it and it is rated highly upon one of my favourite fantasy series at the moment but guys this has been my review on Naomi Novik's Throne of Jade uh, if you haven't already click that subscribe button down below and whilst you're there hit the bell icon so therefore you can be notified every time I upload uh, like I say that's been this book review until next time guys take care <laughs>